I'm Vincent Meza. This is Listings to Leads, and we are here to talk about how to get more listings with the platform. There are a lot of ways, and whether you have listings or if you don't have listings, we have tools that are going to help you get buyer leads or seller leads. Now, I do, before we go down the path here, I want to remind everybody that there is a little handout section here in the GoToMeeting panel, and there's a tool for you to download called Top Tools. Okay. And definitely open that up. This is something that everybody should print. And if you want more listings in your business, you should probably leave this on your desk because you don't want to do these things one time. You want to do them consistently and we'll go through them all. And let's just start at the top, mail out the nearby homeowner letter for local homeowners. So what does that mean? Um, I'm going to take us over to the mastermind group and start the discussion there. Um, just over in September, one of our longtime clients, Matt Pat came in here and said, Hey, I'm going to mail out the nearby homeowner letter. Cause now I just sold my listing. And she says, this will be the second mailer they received because she mailed out a hundred pieces when it was just listed. And now she's mailing out a hundred pieces when now that they're sold. Right. So her cost so far has been 132 bucks for the stamps and then 50 bucks for print. Okay. And, but she also put in, I think we're, yeah, four hours and that's a long time, but I'm going to point out to you why she's doing this. The results is she's got four owners calling her for market values. This is in September. Um, and I guarantee you this lady knows how to close listing. She's been using this letter for years and keeps coming in the mastermind group and telling us. I remember the first time I started to notice her, she was, she sold a unit in a condo and mailed this letter out and re keep mailing it to the same condo units and just keeps producing more and more listings. And this is called the nearby homeowner letter. I'm going to show you our generic copy. She went in and customized it a little bit. She changed this text up here. That looks like it's handwritten. She also put in a few data points, giving just a quick market snapshot. 43 homes sold within one mile. And in the last six months, this is what's going on. So this simple piece of paper is saying, Hey, I've sold a home and here's what's going on in the market. And you can get your free home value, right? One piece of paper is doing all that. She does something very unusual. I've never seen another client do it. So that's why I'm showing this. She prints on the back. You see this here. So she prints out all of these things and then she prints on the back so that she can fold it and you can see what it looks like right here. And she's handwriting the envelopes. Now, why in the world would somebody do that? Why would somebody go through four hours of work to get this out? Now it's four hours combined, probably a couple hours for the first hundred and a couple hours for the, for the second. In the first hundred, she has four homeowners calling her asking for home valuations. These are great leads when people start calling you right and she's been doing it for years and now she now that she's sold the home she's re resending this out that is the nearby homeowner letter and before i take you into the system i'm going to point out one more great example of this and that's chris winstead and if you heard me talking about this i, I told the story actually i was just talking to a, a broker owner this morning who's in san antonio and i said this guy moved to san antonio in the first summer of COVID. So, you know, that was not a great time anywhere in the U S and he moved from out of state, had a license, got joined all city and borrowed listings, pulled them into his account and then started marketing, um, to a list of homeowners. So what he did is he bought this list from a company called remind.com. Okay. And you can buy that and there are multiple ways of getting list of homeowners like that. But he would send out that letter every two weeks to everybody that owned a home for more than five years. He did this in his neighborhood because he bought a home with his wife and his kids and he wants to dominate that area. So he's making these videos, which are pretty, pretty awesome. And then he mails out that letter every two weeks to people with five years equity. And once they opt in on the home valuation page, every week he hits them up. Phone calls, bomb letters left of mail and letters left for. That is an awesome recipe using the same exact letter that we're talking about. Now, I have to point out, 
He moved from out of state to Texas. He gets five listings in three months. Within a couple of years, he starts his own office. And the very first thing he does is he creates a video of, of how to customize our tools for more listings. Now you can go find that video on YouTube. His name is Chris Winstead. That's the first thing he's done. And he just keeps going. He just keeps using our system to get more business, get more listings. Getting buyers is always going to be easy, but you definitely want to have listings in your business. You probably want to see what these guys are doing. We do a lot. One of the frequent uh, concerns is it's overwhelming to most realtors, right? We're integrating with a dozen CRMs. We, do, we integrate with the top uh, social media and, and online platforms in the country and on the internet. We it can connect and blast emails. We have Craigslist, we have YouTube, we have Google. So there's a lot of things to learn. And that's why I'm pointing this page out to you, leadgenwebinars.com. In case you have not seen this, you should take a few classes. That's, you need, in order to have this help you really grow your business, I'm sending this link to you right now. You want to leverage as much as you can of the platform. We do as much as we can to make this easy for you. But these classes here, top tools for more listings, which you're doing today, Facebook and Google ads, which I, I separate every time I'm focused I, on buyers and on sellers and then get started. If you haven't started with us, or if you're new to us and you haven't quite figured out what's going on, you want to make sure you at least got the automation going and that's where it gets started here. So. I do these classes live, just like we're doing here today. This class is recorded. And once that's all recorded, once those classes are recorded, we put them on our YouTube channel. So if, if your schedule doesn't work with our schedule, you can go just see the recordings right here. And one thing I want to point out to you, and I, I don't know if I'll go down this path today, a couple weeks ago, there's just a couple of things here. So as I get into how to get more listings, I may not go in depth on everything, right? On every single item. And so I want to point out a couple of things here. You'll notice that I do Facebook and Google ads down here a month ago, and it says custom audiences for better home value leads. This is on Facebook. Now I'm going to bring us back, but I want you to know that this is here because if you're serious about getting listing leads from Facebook, there are some pitfalls. You could waste a lot of time and money. Okay. I also did this one a month ago, target all four channels, Facebook, Google, print, and CRM. This is something that you definitely need to get your arms around. And I am going to keep mentioning that to you. And then lastly, this Facebook and Google, you, most of you have never run an ad on Google, right? And that's just how it is. I think could realtors and gurus and coaches, everybody, they hang out on Facebook. So that's all they've learned for nearly 10 years. If I ask all of you who's running out on Facebook, 50% of you might say I have. If I ask you who's been successful and gotten a lot of leads and consistently get leads, that number would probably go down to 10%. But if I ask you who is running ads on Google, close to one out of 20. I, I, and I'm just, as just from the conversation. Like who here has run an ad on Google? Just give me a yes if you have. Um, and I was talking to somebody in this owner this morning, and the only really way that I understand people running out on Google is they're paying somebody else for doing it. So there's a bunch of people on this call. Nobody's running out on Google. And it's amazing because it is the number one website in the country, number one website in the world, but also in the United States, it's number one. And it's where 86% of all questions are asked here. We go to Facebook to look at what our friends are eating and where they're vacationing and look at cats and fun stuff. But when we need to know what's the most, where, where's a great place to grab a steak or rent a hotel, or how do I sell my home? That is all occurring right here. And you need to be thinking about that. And so let's go over here to the top tools. And I mentioned, if you're late on the call here, there is a, there's an area in the GoToMeeting panel that says handouts. I think it's handouts. Yeah. I would download this and print this. And I'm just going to read it off so we can get familiar with what we're going to get on here. The nearby homeowner letter, which is what we were looking at earlier. Run ads for uh, on Facebook for pending and sold. Create property valuation pages. 
These are instant home value pages for each of your farm areas. Run ads uh, for those on Facebook and on Google. And then there's a home sold report, which is in the advanced options of every home value page. You can mail that out. And then just sold postcards, blast out the status of all your properties on your CRM. And then get the seller to share their tools. You're going to see that we have tools that are not for you. We can auto post things for you to, to social media. You can run ads if you want, but we have tools for the seller that we can automatically send to the seller. And if you call them and ask them to put them up there on, on their Facebook, you're going to end up getting leads from their friends and family and colleagues. These are much closer to referrals than just a random online internet lead. You're going to close them faster. And then the last thing we'll be talking about is how to create a custom audience. I don't know if you're aware of this, but targeting on Facebook, the power of their targeting has been reduced kind of year after year for about five years. And so a lot of agents will run an ad and not get any response, right? Just not get any, just, there's actually somebody in the mastermind group that asked that. I don't know what their ad was, but I know when you're running ads for home values and trying to get listing leads on Facebook, there's a lot of, there's a few ways of just wasting your time and money. It's all, it's almost ineffective. And to make it effective, you need to create a custom audience. So let's start at the top near my homeowner letters. I, I gave you a couple of examples, Chris and Pat, where does this live, right? Where do we go find that? So let's go over here and let's log in the account. And I want to say first that you can do this with a borrowed listing. Okay, so you might not have any listings right now, but let's say that you wanted to, you, you had a farm market, you had a town that you really want to build your business in. And if you go to your listings page um, and you talk to a colleague who maybe has an active listing there, you can, if you get their permission, you can pull it in right here. That's what Chris Winstead was doing, right? This guy moved from out of state. He had no, none of his old, old listings. He didn't have his own listing, so he was just borrowing from the office or listings in his neighborhood, right? So you might want to do that. Well, if you do, you just go to grab listing, you drop in the zip code and the MLS ID, and that listing is going to sit here and look like your listing. Now I'm going to go to an active listing, uh, or actually, no, stop. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do just listed. And the reason why I, I'm showing you a just listed listing is if you remember Pat Motley was saying, yeah, I mailed this out when the home was just listed and I got four home value, uh, four homeowners calling me. And, and now I'm gonna mail it out that the home is just sold. So when we go here and we got the listing, we're talking about the nearby homeowner letter. When you click market listing, there's all these things you can do, but we're focused on getting listings. So the number one thing you gotta do is get the nearby homeowner letter. There are three versions of this, all right? And they're just, aesthetically, they look different. You can go either way. I'm gonna download this so that we can see what it looks like generic right out of the box. And it's pretty simple, okay? And it's meant to be simple because I, I'm sure you're aware everybody in the United States is ADD and they don't really read. And so this is meant to glance and make a quick decision. Hey, we've got a home just listed. Go check it out on that website. When that home sold, it's going to affect your home value. Go right there to get your free home value. That's it. Not a lot there. As, as a reminder, Pat took that letter and added a little more of the market snapshot that she just put together because you can edit that before. That pencil right there means you can edit it and then you can download it and then go off. But this is what it looks like kind of standard generic out of the system. And I think that, I don't even think Chris Winstead, who was got all those listings in San Antonio, I don't think he, I think he just went straight right out of the box just like this. And all of these people, so both um, Chris has been with us for a few years and Pat's been with us for 10 years. Our clients have been doing this the, the manual old fashioned way. They download it. They would fold it up. Some would mail them off to their printers and maybe do a bulk mailing and you get whatever kind of results. But you, if you go look in the history of our mastermind group, 
you'll notice that some of our clients are like buying these super nice custom letters, custom envelopes, because if it looks custom and it doesn't look like bulk mail, there's a high likelihood of it getting opened. And you know, it's a simple letter, so it's not like a heavy lift. Once they look, it's, hey, do you want your free home value? So our clients have bought really cool custom embossed things and stuff like that. And our, our clients years ago realized that if they handwrite the envelopes, they get better results, right? And that's why Pat's going through that exercise. I don't know if Chris handwrites it. We've known it's a top tool, but we also know it's like a lot of work to get out there. So we started a partnership with a company called Express Copy. So if you go here, you can tell us you to go create an account. And then you, once you connect it, well, now you can say print and mail, and this is really awesome. So let's give it a second. It actually is an in integration. It's not a financial integration. We're not getting any revenue share or anything off of this. We're just making it easier for you. If you click this button that says get mailing list, you can say, hey, I want this to go to one or two mile radius. And it will automatically go to homeowners of single family homes with more than six years equity. It's basically a buck 85 per letter. All right. Now what Pat did in contrast is she did it all by hand and she hand wrote those envelope, which she printed on front and back. She did not use this because she did it all herself. In this way, you click submit order and all that work, except for the custom, there's no custom handwriting here. What they will do is they'll take that letter that we see on the right. They'll fold it, they'll put it in an envelope and they'll mail it to this list of homeowners. And that's a much faster way of doing the same thing, right? It's maybe not as effective because it might look a little more like bulk mail, but it's targeting the right people and it's the right letter. So this can definitely be a, a, a time saver and I definitely recommend it. Or you can go the hand route that some of our other clients do. Uh, let's see, where is the PDF? Are you talking about this letter right here? This, is that what you're calling a PDF? This is called the nearby homeowner letter. And it's always on a market listing. Any listing that's in your account, when you click market tools or market listing, that is the nearby homeowner letter. And that's what's, that's what's going to happen. The one you mentioned. The one for the class you mentioned, Randy, I hope I'm answering your question here because I think that's like, I'm not having talked about any PDFs. This is just a one page letter. So that's the number one tool guys. Any questions on how to use this or get it out? If you're going to do anything, if you want more listings, you absolutely should be doing this. And as Pat does it, she mails this out when a home is just listed and she'll mail it out when that same listing has sold. And it's so effective, that's a lot of our clients wanna get this out frequently in the market, okay? Let's see if we have any more questions here. Do you have an impending or sold? Yes, okay, yeah. So I just said just now, Sam, that in the market, that it's just listed or pending or sold. So when the listing hits your system, it always arrives when it's just listed. And you might change it to under contract or just sold. When you sell it, just change it. And that letter is going to be rewritten in saying, hey, this home is sold and go get your home value. So that's how you do that. You just update it right here. Let's go back. Let's go look at this one. This one is sold. So let's click on this one. And we also have... So the nearby homeowner letter here is already updated to talk about the, the fact that the property sold. The e-flyer for your database is an electronic version of that same thing. And if you have any status change on any home in your account, you should be copying this by clicking copy code and blasting it out on your CRM. If they click that picture or these two links, they're going to end up on a landing page for the listing. And that's going to be capturing leads. If they scroll down, it's always going to say that affects your home value and go here to get your free home value. Okay. So we're driving them to the landing page for an instant home value. You have something just listed. You have an open house, you go pending or you're sold. 
update that status, copy this code, blast it out in your CRM. That's that this should always be happening. Okay. Because it's always going to be offering a free home value. Now this property is sold. We also can do some other things, right? We can say, Hey, let's do a door hanger. Let's just look at the door hanger real quick. I don't know. That's, I don't know if it gets much bigger, but on the door hanger on the top, it's go check out this property. Let's see if it's readable. Yeah. And down below right under that affects your home value. So if you like print, use our designs. Basically the thing about listings to leads, which is totally apparent here is we have call to actions. You as a typical realtor, you have branding, you have the colors, you have your logo, you have your picture and your phone number. And you might notice that people are not calling you all the time. We, when we create tools, yeah, we've got your pick and your logo, but we've also got call to actions where people can go online and get free information and they have to give up their contact information for that free, for that free info. Also, what you got to do is you got to go up here. When you have a property that's sold, you want to run an ad. Let's just click on Facebook ad. So this property is sold and I click on Facebook and Instagram and an ad is already prepared that this home is sold and it's going to affect your home value. Click here for your free home value, right? What do you have to do to work, work this? You have to click this green button that says create ad. I don't know if any of you have run ads on Facebook. I can guarantee you it is not this simple. There are way, there are a lot more things to do. And that's why a lot of agents don't have great results on Facebook. We're using Facebook lead forms here. And so what happens is when this, you see this ad over here on the, on the right, it'll be sponsored by your business page. I'm going to go over to Facebook real quick. So when it goes to Facebook, it shows up right here in, in, uh, on this page. Oh, this is Cindy had a birthday. <laughs> so it, it'll be right here in this middle column. Okay. And when somebody sees it and they want to click on it, then it, that's when we're going to, this window is going to pop up said, would you like this information? And the answer is yes, but their name and email and phone number is pre-populated from their profile. And so when they click yes, they're submitting that information. And that's why our, our clients love our Facebook software because leads with name, email, and phone number are pretty popular, right? And you need to be pr pretty accurate because if you get locked out of your own Facebook account, you need your phone number and you need your email. So a, a, a lot of our clients like that. So let's go back and look at this top tool thing. So we've talked about the nearby homeowner letter. We talked right here about running ads on properties that are sold or pending or under contract. Anytime you're running an ad on a property that is pending or under contract or sold, you get your, the call to actions is offering a free home value, right? It's basically, Hey, it's pending when it closes, it's going to affect your home value. Click here to get your home value. So let's talk a little bit about costs, right? We put a $50 budget. That means that you can't spend more than 50 bucks and it's going to run through for seven days. Okay. And, but when you run an ad on Facebook, the, the cost of a lead is set by Facebook and it's set based on, I think one of the number one ways is what, what you're doing and how much competition do you have? Are there a lot of people running sold ads on Facebook? If there are a lot, your leads going to cost more. If there are few, your leads are going to cost less. So we got a $50 ad and we're running it for a week. And if I run that ad, these leads on average are going to cost $7 each. Okay. They're going to be higher in some places and lower in other places. That's just the average that we see right now. And that's for a sold ad. If you run an ad for buyers, if you have something just listed, those leads often cost around $3, but here I've got a property that's pending, right? And I'm going to run an ad on that one. I'm just going to, because the pending and under contract statuses, they have, you can run ads on those too. So if I click this here, the ad's already pre-written. 
You can customize it if you want to say, hey, we've got, if we sold something, we got five offers, we still have more people looking and we sold it 10K above average or, or we sold it in two or three weeks. But this is a pending one, right? So you might want to customize the text here because this ad, may, people may not really understand, right? They, they might not even slow down to look at it. Because if I see something that's pending, I'll be just like, oh, okay, whatever. But this fact that's going to affect your home value is really what we're after. Click here to get your free home value so that we can get their contact. If you can say anything to jazz this up and make this work better, I would recommend you customize it. You click in here and you customize it. But notice we have a $50 ad again, right? But because not many agents are running ads on pending and under contract, you don't have competition. So we're seeing and getting feedback from our clients in the mastermind group that these leads with name, email, and phone number for home values are costing around $2.50. So if you run a $50 ad, you're going to wind up with 20 leads. Okay. That's great. <laughs> if buyer leads cost $3, why are seller leads costing $2.50? Because you don't have competition doing it. So this is a really smart way of getting things out there um, and getting low cost seller leads. I see some questions, so let's go check that. Facebook leads seem to convert at a very low rate. Okay, curious if you have any data on conversion rates. I have a lot of, in, in, uh, compared to Facebook leads or Google leads. So the, that's a, a, an, an interesting, clear statement. The nature of Facebook is it's got all kinds of cool stuff. Right. You can see where your friends are traveling. You could see all the cat and dog pics and all that stuff. It is where American adults, not kids, spend 40 minutes a day just scrolling through this nonsense here. Right. And if you lob up there that, hey, you know what? I got to open house or whatever, something affecting real estate. That might actually resonate. Right. It might be, a, oh, yeah, I'm thinking of buying a house. I, I want to go check out that open house. Right. But we did not come here to Facebook to look at real estate, right? We might, a lot of people obviously know to go to Zillow, right? But if people have questions on real estate, they go right here. The number one website is here. So if the question is, how do I sell my home? 86% of all people come right here to ask their questions. They might type in, Homes for sale near me, right? In that example, they have a question, they have a need. And if you run an ad and you're showing up here, you're answering their need, right? Over here, I'm looking at what my friends are eating. I'm looking at where they're going and what show they saw last night, right? That's, it's a different place. So yes, Facebook leads convert slower, right? And that's just a big general, that's broad brushing it. If you go over here to our YouTube channel, and I think we have it here, but it disappeared. Yeah, over here is a lady. This lady ran an ad. I'm going to show it to you. Oh, ran an ad in Maryland. Oh, it's gone somewhere. And she runs one thirty-five dollar ad on an open house on Facebook, and gets three active buyers on one listing in seven days. Right now, the listing. I, she ran the ad in March. The listing went live in summer, but she was like, hey, I saw your ad. I, I need some help. So Facebook can definitely make people's business, right? You just have to do that, right? In, in terms of, is there a, a, a real uh, metric that I can tell you? I've had to, I talked to a lot of teams. I talked to a lot of agents and it's usually the teams that are better positioned to convert. If you've got a team, you have to feed a team. If you're a single agent, you're going to forget half the things you got to do to feed yourself. You're just going to be distracted. The phone's ringing and you got a million things to do. So teams actually put together conversion plans a lot better than single agents. And I had a, I have, I've had a, gone to so many conferences and talked to people. And I had somebody tell me we convert 5% of your Facebook leads. 5%. I think the average in internet advertising is one. That was a Remax team, pretty big outfit. I've had other people come to me and say, we convert one out of 40 
Google leads, but we convert one out of 70 Facebook leads, right? So almost twice as good on the Google side. Also twice as much money, right? But you want to mix it up, right? So Sam's asking, if somebody clicks on the ad without downloading, would that cost you on Google? Yes, it would, Sam. We'll, we'll get into that in a minute. We'll talk about it. And can you do just sold on the other agent when we other when we went pending or sold to just? Yes, Shane, you can. So a lot of agents, they're helping the buyer, right? They're helping the buyer buy the home. And so they know that it's, it's sold, right? They know that it's pending. And they probably will ask the listing agent, or, but the, assuming that you're following your local rules, they'll put it in and they'll run the ad because a lot of listing agents, they don't bother marketing their listings when they're sold. I don't know why they just don't. I actually, one of our clients has, has our system and I see him posting, um, it's for their office. Anytime they have a sold property, it's, let me see if I can show you, I'll show you, give me a second. You should be, they're not even running ads, but let's just, yeah, right here. So this is an office claim. This has been, been with us for years in Arkansas. And they probably have some new tool that's auto posting for them, right? And that's what I'm thinking because I keep seeing that they've got this stuff that says it's sold, right? This right here, really nice. It's got their colors. It's got their branding. It's got their phone number and even the agent's name. And that's what it is. Okay. Now, this is one of those crazy making things for me, um, because this property here, let's see, is this one sold? This one's pending. Let's go to a sold property. And let's look at what happens when you market a sold property with our system. So let's see, social media posts. And what I'm showing you here can be automatically done, right? So it's, I'm going to go single property website and share on Facebook. Okay. So let's see. Yeah. yeah. So it's just sold, right? Just sold. And I say, Hey, we sold this for 40 K over, right? Over a little bit, whatever you can, you sure go this way that you want. I'm just showing you how it works and you post and this, what I'm showing you can be done automatically. It just can't. If I'm doing this automatically and it looks like this, well, you see it's just sold, right? Whatever you write, it's out there, right? And if I click on this, I'm going to be drawn to a single property website that we automatically created for you. And what's even cooler about this, it's got everything that you want, right? It looks awesome. It's mobile optimized, all kinds of cool stuff. Lots of lead capture on here. But this little call to action right here is offering a free home value because the property is sold or it's pending, right? And Randy over at Red Door, I don't know, he forgot about this or well, I don't know, but he's putting nice, colorful things out there. We, by the way, we have Randy's logo and color scheme in his account. So I don't, th that's the funny thing. I have so many realtors that are friends with me on Facebook. And I have learned over the years that they are really good at, at putting colorful things on social media, lots of colors, lots of branding, just no lead capture. And that's really what we're all about here. It's, Hey, we know that you're doing things. You need to make sure that if you're taking an action, that you're capturing a lead uh, with that action. Anyway, we're getting a little bit distracted. Let's jump on the questions and let's get back into the deal here. Yeah. But yes, you can borrow the listing, you can run ads, you can use a nearby homeowner letter, all that. All right, let's go back to here and talk about what else we need. Let's create a property valuation page. So let me ask real quickly, has anybody here created a home value landing page in your listings to leads account? Give me a yes or no, just so I can get a, a glimpse of what, you know, you guys as clients are doing. You go here to landing pages and let me ask you, yes, no, I got one yes and one no. So Susan, where did you create your, what city? This is how you create it. You click create landing page and it says type and you do property valuation plus. 
Okay. Does Listings Leads create our own website with landing page too? Yes, Victoria, that's what we're doing right now. Okay. So if anybody can give me the name of a city that they want to see how you create a landing page, we'll create it right. Oh, San Francisco. Oh, Miami. Let me do San Francisco because I actually know I live right outside San Francisco and I never do it. Let's do, and I will tell you this, uh, this is being recorded and it will be on the YouTube channel. San Francisco, it, it's great town there. It's about got about 750,000 people and there are some neighborhoods. I might actually be doing this, not San Francisco wide, but neighborhood wide, like Pacific Heights or what is my Noe Valley home worth? These are, and it, it gets specialized, right? You realtors know that you specialize in certain areas, but let's just do San Francisco and create landing page. Okay. This is how you do it. You type in, you spell it correctly, you capitalize it correctly, and you click create landing page. And we'll give it a second while we're doing that. Okay. So it looks like this. Okay. Pretty generic. Doesn't really speak to me about San Francisco. And that's the first problem, you don't want to go out generic like this. Notice we got your reviews plugged in already too. So it gives you a little bit of confidence of working with you. But when you do this, we drop you right over here on change the background picture. So let me type in San Francisco and click on images. Oh yeah, there's the, yeah. So let's, let's pick, I'm going to, I'm going to just do this as quickly as I can. Let's see, you want to, you want a photo. This says 1600 pixels wide, usually like 1900 pixels wide. I'm going to try this one. Ah, darn it. Sorry. See if I can do that again. Save image as, oh, it's giving me something else. Too small. Sorry guys. I don't mean to waste your time here. Let's see if I can do this. Save image. As. Yeah. Okay. So you, if you've got one of these cool, fancy smartphones, you can take your own photo and hold your phone sideways when you do it. Okay. And let's go here. And now I have a photo that should fit. I'm going to click upload image. I'm going to click here, upload and open. Yeah. Oh, that didn't work. Lame. <laughs> okay, sorry. All right. So I'm, I'm not going to waste any more time here. Let's go back to the landing page section. I have a landing page show. Let me show you where are these guys doing it. None of these really make much sense to me. Let me explain to you what you need to have. It's weird though. You need to have something that resonates locally. This, when I set up Cobalt Baker in Summit, New Jersey, I did some rollout calls and, and we talked about all the things and we talked about this, right? We talked about this home valuation landing page and somebody over there realized they, they took a picture of the summit diner. Now this is a small town. It's about 22,000 people. This is on main street. It's the old converted railroad car. Look when you get your greasy bacon and eggs on the weekends and all that stuff, right? That, and basically the owners called me and said, God, we're getting leads all this way and that way. But the number one home valuation ad that's getting us listing leads is the one with the Summit Diner in the back. And I want to point that out to you because it's a lot of agents will put on like this new McMansion from their area. And if all homes don't look like that, it's not going to work out very well. But let's see where I, I actually need something. I think these guys just keep falling around here. Yeah, let's see. Oh, here's one. Here's the one here, Concord, right? Oh, here's the Arinda one I created last night. Arinda is a small town by me, and there's this old theater. That thing's like nearly 100 years old. This is 15 minutes out of San Francisco. Quiet, suburban neighborhood, right? So you create it, and I want to click in Edit and Tools. So if you click on Edit and Tools, it's going to bring you over here where you could upload that photograph, which I did on a call previously. But over here, it says Advanced Options. And there is a print marketing. There's a letter right here that looks a lot like that nearby homeowner letter. We started the call with the nearby homeowner letter. 
And I was like, this is great. Well, it's the number one tool because I think really agents have figured out where it is. This is almost identical, but you don't need a listing. You can actually customize this text here and say, hey, 20 homes sold at Orinda this month and the high is here, the low is here, and that's 100 for the year. You just keep it short and sweet on one page. That's going to affect your home value. Get your free home value now, right? So if you don't have listings in your account, you can always create landing pages for your farm markets and then get this letter. It's on the advanced options of every home valuation page. There's also a postcard or a door hanger if you want to go that route, okay? And you see we have QR codes too if you want to drive people to it with a QR code. And so you can also tell us to auto post this landing page to your social media, right? So you don't have to even mess with it. Now, auto posting is different than running an ad, right? Posting is just sharing something. Running an ad means it's going to be seen by hundreds or thousands of people. So we've created our landing page. I'm going to, I'm going to go down the Orinda one. Now let's go back to our top tools. So what are we talked about? We created the landing page. Then it says run ads on Facebook and Google. Okay. Now, do you remember that I said Google is the number one website on the internet and on in the US? So let's go there first. Let's do the one. It's the one that you as realtors do the least. Let's go over to the ad section over here. And you probably didn't even know we have Google software built in here. And it is an upcharge. It costs 30 bucks a month to use it. And that's because we make it super easy and, and it just saves you a lot of time and it makes your ad successful. Over here, if you don't have, if you haven't subscribed to the Google, if I click on create Google ad, if you haven't subscribed, it will tell you, oh, you got to subscribe and, and you get 30 free days. You should definitely try this out, but I'm going to do a landing page ad and I'm going to run an ad on Orinda and I'm going to click free ad. Okay. And all you have to do to have a successful ad is type in the name of the city that you are targeting. Boom. Publish. That's it. Okay. If you try to execute this in Google, it's not likely you would succeed. It's not easy. It's ugly. It's not intuitive. And you would have to take some classes to learn how to do that correctly. Here, you create your landing page. You put a picture of your town in back and you go over here and you click run an ad to that landing page and you type in the town and you click publish. How does that sound? Does that sound complicated, guys? I'm going to click on view link so that you can see when they see the ad, they're going to land here. And Sam had a question. He's, if I run an ad, it's going to look like this, right? This is the de desktop view. It's going to look like that. So let's go here. I'm going to do, how do I sell my, and I'm, and so I typed in some words and I sit here in, in a location and Google is targeting on our ad. It's people that live in Orinda. I live next door in Lafayette. So you see these ads, the way these look right here, that is corresponding to that look right there. Okay. So you know what it's going to look like now. If you click on view a link that it's, you know what it's driving to. So to, to just so we're clear, people can see it. They may not click on it. If they click on it, they're going to land on this page. And to answer Sam's question, you will pay for that click. Okay. They may go here and go, I don't know. I don't want to do this. I'm leaving. You still got to pay for that. But if they give you their information, we're sending that to you. All right. Down here in advanced, which you never need to look at, we have all the keywords. You can see what keywords we're using here. Okay. You wouldn't want to actually know this, but on Google, you have to write multiple headlines and they rotate them. These are headlines over here. I'm highlighting their blue. You have to write all these headlines and you may not know what to write. I'm pretty sure you don't know what to write. You also have to write a dis three different descriptions. Okay. Which are going to be rotated in here until they like triangulate on what's the most effective ad. You have to do all that by hand. And if you're using our software, all you have to do is create the landing page, 
and click create an ad and click publish. And everything else is done automatically. That's how you compete on the number one website in the United States. And I recommend that all of you after this call, you go do some searches on Google and find out who is like dominating your area. Are you there? Are you on page one? Because if not, the way to get there is by using Google or Google ad, ad system. So let's see here. Yeah, what do you, so Janice, you asked the question about keywords is, do you understand now what's happening there? Can you run an ad for multiple cities in one ad? And does it work? Does it have to be specific to a city? You probably can run an ad on different cities, but let me explain that. We're going to, I usually talk about it when it's related to Facebook, but let me tell you, let's type in Orinda, right? We were looking at Orinda. We know we could run an ad and target Orinda. And where are you from, Shane? Like, where do you live? What city state? I'm in Northern California. I'm about 30 minutes east of San Francisco in, I guess you'd call it kind of the bedroom communities, right? There's a little bar. There's like a tram, a metro train that takes you out of the financial district and whoo, you live out here, right? Pretty easy, decent commute. This little area right here is Orinda. And this area over here, all this, and a little bit more than this map is called Contra Costa County. And the price points in this county, you know, just for conversation's sake, range from around 300 a home over here, maybe 400 over here, and maybe 4 million here, 1 million, 2 million over here, right? There's a big spread. So if you are not targeting, if I own a home in Alamo, I'm going to talk to the professional that knows Alamo. Not the one that knows Alamo, Clayton, and Antioch. I need to know because I've got an investment in my property. I want the best person who handles that area. If you try to run an ad on Contra Costa County, which is almost everything in this map, I'm not even going to respond. Even if I owned a home over here in Antioch where they're like 300 grand, because my investment in Antioch, I want the most return. I need the pro for Antioch, not the pro for Contra Costa County. Unless you've got, you are the top listing agent in your MLS and you've got like hundreds of things to show and you can speak to that. I, I, but even that is literally you speaking to them. That's more of the conversion process for people to respond to an ad. I guess if you wrote an ad and said, Hey, I've sold 200 homes this year and I got a couple of data points, click here to get your free home value. That might work. But if you're not, that probably won't work. Okay. So Wayne County. Yeah. Yeah. Metro Detroit. I don't know Detroit. I know there's been a lot of real estate up and downs in the past 10 years. The, but that nature of what I'm telling you, like even Detroit, I'm going to assume that's a big town just because I know it on the map. And if it is a big town, you're going to probably want to focus on particular areas. There are really well-known counties, Contra Costa County, which I'm talking about now, nobody knows that county. They know Bucks County. What, what are the, the, there's a few Florida counties that people always do that, but it's really when I'm selling a home, unless I'm like a big institutional investor, that's my biggest investment. I need the pro who knows my area. So you need to not be thinking countywide. You can try it. I don't get a lot of results from it. We're talking about Google right now. Let's go over and talk about Facebook because that's where things really get squirrely. So here I can actually target Orinda, right? I can, it, you can't do much more. Like in the old days on Facebook, I could literally target homeowners who own a home in Orinda by zip code. Boy, Facebook was incredibly powerful then, right? And you could say, hey, I want to create an ad and I'm going to do a landing page ad and I'm going to do my Orinda one because I'm after Orinda, right? And I just did one on Google, which is the number one website in the country. I'm going to target the same group on Facebook, which is the number three website in the country. Okay. So how would I do that? Well, I would type in Orinda and I can't target less than 15 mile radius. Okay. You can't, 
because Facebook got in trouble for illegal ads. Okay. So what does that mean? That means everybody on this map that you're looking at, Arinda's here, almost everybody on this map is going to see this ad. Okay. And it's not going to be effective because I can tell you, if I own a home in Blackhawk, I don't care what's happening in Arinda. If I own a home over here, I don't care what's happening in Arinda. And your ad is talking about Arinda, right? That's, and a lot of our clients, they don't even create a home value page for a specific fat farm. Like I, I actually typed in, you, you saw me create a home valuation page. I actually created a home valuation page. I got a picture of Arinda and I put it in the back. And that's when I started marketing. When you sign up as a listings to leads client, we give you three landing pages right off the bat. This is the number one free home values, right? I think realtors just want to go out and run this ad. This doesn't work that well it, because it's not speaking to any area. It's just, oh, wow, well, okay, let's fill this out, right? You have to be writing something super compelling to run it out there. And often they're in the mastermind group or they're on this call saying, I don't get any results when I do that. Of course you don't because you're not even speaking to a particular area. And that's really what you need to be thinking about is how do I, how do I speak to homeowners in that area? Not with generic stuff and not with counties either. But let's go back to what we were trying to do, which is run that ad on Facebook for Arenda. And now you know that I'm going to be spraying all over a 15 mile radius and my ad is not going to work that well, right? So what is the solution? How do I make that work? At the bottom of this list, it says upload a custom homeowner, custom audience, okay, to Facebook for better target. What does that mean? There's a blue button here that says create, custom, create audience. If I click, and you need to, if you're going to do this, you need to listen to what I'm saying. I had a guy on here and he did this and it didn't work. And for two weeks he would send me him. And what he was doing is he wasn't really following this, the instructions. Okay. And if you're lucky to hear me, yeah, but the instructions are right here on this list. You would create it. You would type in the name of your farm market. This is going to live in your Facebook account or into homeowners. And it tells you it's got to be a thousand leads long. So you're going to get it in Excel or in a CSV file of a thousand leads. You might buy that from Remind, maybe from Red X or maybe some other great company or maybe your title, right? So this guy listened to my call and he goes over here and he uploads it. And right here it says, use this format. What does that mean? What that means is your spreadsheet needs to look like this with those same exact headers. That is the format that you can upload, okay? And the gentleman that I was having chats with, he had in 20, he got some spreadsheet somewhere and there was like 20 different columns of stuff and it didn't work. He uploaded, it, it said there, but it just wasn't even, it wasn't even working. It was just a mess. And then, and I had, a, I jumped on the phone and we looked at it, I was like, oh, that's, Weird. I said, can you send me the file? And I look at it and I said, oh my God, what's all this data? This is telling you right here what it needs to look like. Why does it have all that? And I said, go clean that and then upload it again. He goes, does it. And he goes, I fixed it and I didn't, and it didn't work. And I was like, well, that's really strange. Let, let me just show you something. A little, a little bit of a deep dive, but since we're talking about it, let me see if I can show you. Oh, <laughs> Custom ones. Yeah. Yeah. This is probably it, right? You see this. So you see where it says email number, first name, last name. So he figured that out. What he didn't know, which not everybody knows, and which is if you have a space like column two and column three and column four, it breaks. We just don't even, the, the system software cannot see that. So I was like, you need to sort this. So there's no gaps in here. Right. If you're missing a number like here, missing something, okay, it, it can deal with that. But somewhere this has to be like no gaps in here. This is software. This is Excel. And 
It's not like I want to be teaching you guys how to use Excel, but that's why it didn't work. I said, like, clean that up and upload it again. And then you should. Now I haven't heard from him since, and hopefully he fixed that. Why would you do that? That's because if I create a landing page ad and I want to target homeowners in Orinda, and I bought a list of homeowners from Remind, and I know that they have six years or five years equity or whatever. Now, when I create the ad, let's do this. Instead of typing in location, which I know is going to give me a 15 mile radius, I could type in Orinda. Now, I didn't create that, but we have a couple of other custom audiences. So it should look like that. Instead of L2L custom audience, it should say L2L Orinda homeowners, right? And now you're targeting the people who own homes in Orinda because you bought that from a company and you created a custom audience. And there you go. Does that make sense to everybody? There's a few hoops there. But if you're going to be in the industry for a while, you need to solve for that. Okay. What if my list only has names and emails? Would that work? That might work, Sam. Yeah. Ideally, you have the name, you need the name and you need the phone number and email. But if they don't have all of those, usually one email or phone number will work. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to be repetitive. If you're going to be in the industry and you want a listing business, I highly recommend that you create that, that you get that list. We talked so far about, oh, that's already an hour. We talked about home sold report. We talked about postcards. We talked about the custom audience. And we talked about the e-flyer and we also said, oh, I want to just remind you that there's a shell, the seller's tool. So I mentioned it earlier, but I didn't really go down the path. This is something that we automatically create. If you update the status on your property, we email this to you and we tell you, hey, send this to your client. Okay. And let me do this here. And so you can actually drop the email in your, in the system here somewhere, but this is called share and seller social media. And we email this content to you. It's in an email and we tell you, Hey, click the forward button and send that to your client and call them and ask them to put it on their wall, on their Facebook wall. Okay. And let's see if it's going to pick up the photo here. Maybe it will. Yeah. So it is a photo, right? So this is not a paid ad. This is some, this is an email that we sent to you that you're forwarding to your client and you're, and especially if you sold their home, they're probably thrilled with you. But you say, Hey, would you mind putting that on your wall for me? You actually get this when the home is just listed and when it's open house and when it's pending and when it's sold, but you definitely want to use it when it's sold. And you probably want to use it when it's just listed and open house too. Because in this case, it, it's like our home is sold. And we want to recommend you for doing a great job. Here is your phone number and email in front of all my friends and family and colleagues to, to see. This is not a paid ad. And the value of that for you is a paid ad that disappears in seven days or five days or 10 days, whatever you decide, but this stays forever. And what our clients have found is that their friends and their family and their colleagues, they're not on Facebook every day. Sometimes they log in weeks or months later and they're going, oh, my cousin sold their home. Interesting. I'm thinking of selling mine. Maybe I'll click on that. And what happens when they click on that? Just to do a little fact biting, right? You remember this story, right? All this is here and what else is going to happen? This is going to pop up automatically. So our clients are getting free home valuation leads from their current clients, friends and family and colleagues. These are going to be a lot easier to convert than your random internet lead. Are there any questions about what I've talked about today? Can you show the email that you send again? Yeah. So it's called share on seller social media. It's right here. It's on the market listing. Uh, list and you can send it to yourself, but we do send it to you automatically. You can send a test email and it'll go to you. You can even add the seller's information here. So you can say, Hey, dear John, here's John's email. 
boom. And then as you're updating the status, we'll send it and we'll copy you. That's a reminder for you to call your client and say, hey, I just sent you something. Would you copy that and put that on your Facebook wall? You should definitely be doing this when you're just listed. If you do an open house, do it again on the seller's wall. And all that being said, one thing that I forgot to mention, and I appreciate you hanging out here, we have a listing presentation here, okay? And it, we call it the property marketing plan because it's not the entire listing presentation uh, because there's a lot of value that you're bringing to the table and all the things that you do. But this here is 27 pages of all of the things that we're doing, some of them completely automated that you don't even have to touch. But it does talk about running ads. It talks about print marketing. It talks about the nearby marketing for your neighborhood, database, leveraging your CRM. All of these things, even I, it, it's going to talk about those tools. And as I'm clicking through here, you might start to realize, oh, we're doing a whole heck of a lot here. I got just listed. I got coming soon. I got pending marketing. All, there is no agent who is going to be able to compete with you with all of this, okay? And so you wanna use that. And that, and that particular uh, tool that we're talking about for the seller is in this as well. So you wanna download this, you wanna have this on your desk. If you're gonna have more listings, you need to have a consistent plan on how to market. And I have just given you a lot of tools that you should have at your fingertips so that, what am I doing to get more listings? It's right here. Okay, it's on this list. If you miss this, I told you where to download. I'm going to download it. If you don't have this in front of you and you need it, you can email me at Vince at Listings to Leads and I'll send it to you after the call. All right, any other questions? I appreciate your time here. Sorry, I couldn't get that, that San Francisco photo to work. I don't know what that is. You always want to be careful with that stuff anyway, especially pulling it off the internet because it's, a lot of you, uh, a lot of your competitor real estate agents will have pictures on, and the, you'll see them just like this. And if you don't know, you, you could be, they might have some copyright. So one advanced tip is if you see a photo on Wikipedia or any of your towns, those photos are often like common domain. You won't have any copyright problems. This one, however, when I hover over it, I don't know if you can see, there's a number over here that says 1,200 pixels wide. That might be a little bit small. You really want to have something that's 1,900 pixels wide or 2,000 pixels wide. And maybe that's why my San Francisco one didn't work because it was like 1,500. All right, everybody, this call is being recorded. It will be up on our YouTube channel this, probably today or tomorrow. And I, it'll be on the videos page. And I definitely recommend that you check out a couple of, here I go on custom audiences, down here, focus on four channels. I would watch a couple of these. They're going to sound repetitive, but if you can apply these tools, you're going to have more listings in your business. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Have a great week and talk to you soon.